Our job is to go out and offer support to people and their families who are living at home, get to know them and give them advice about their illness, symptom control. We work with the GPs and the district nurses very, very closely. People are very vulnerable and they need to be treated gently but honestly. And um, people give back an awful lot. And I think that's another reason why we do it. You're not giving of yourself all the time. You're learning from people's experiences as well and you get an awful lot from that. And I think just being part of a team of people who are trying to make a difference to people and their families when they're struggling, having a hard time, it's immensely rewarding and satisfying to, to think that sometimes we can do that. There's a man who comes to work on a bike. Everybody here, in their own way, provides spiritual care, whether they realise that or not. So many people here are very good at listening and empowering rather than, than telling people how to behave or how to be. And I think that, that very much is what spiritual and emotional care is about. We try very much to begin where people are in their journey. And the idea is that uh, we respond to people's needs. And if those needs are religious, then we, we would contact uh, a representative of their own faith community to come in. And if they don't have any overt um, religious needs or beliefs, then if they want us to, we can accompany them on their journey as, as they're trying to, to make sense of what's happening. Granddad used to give me money to buy sweets and juice from the coffee shop. That was great, I used to buy lots. There are the two coffee rooms and then people help in reception there and out in the wards and there's drivers, there's complimentary therapy, there's charity shops, tin collections. There's all sorts of jobs that you can do here. There's a calm even just in the hall and we don't have hushed voices or anything like that. You know, you don't change when you come through the door at all. You're just yourself. And there's a place for fun and laughter here as well. You're very conscious that there will be distress here, but you're conscious also of the philosophy of the, the hospice and the hopefulness and the caring for the whole person and the whole family too. So. We're very, the volunteers are very much part of that. We're, we're essential all over the hospice, in fact. There are 500 of us, and I can't imagine the hospice without the volunteers. It just wouldn't work. I'm one of the volunteer drivers, so what I do is I provide a, a pickup service for the, the day patients who are coming in. I feel it's a very sort of small percentage of my time that I give, um, which really does make a difference to the, to the people that attend the hospice. It's obviously still a, a health care environment, but it differs from a hospital in that it is calmer, it's got a much homelier, um, comforting approach. Um, staffing, we, ha we have more um, trained staff, more staff in general, and so patient choice can truly be patient choice because you can work your day around the patient. So the hospital is an independent local charity, which has, for which the patients pay no contribution at all. Part of our funding comes from the health board and the rest of the money is raised from local, local people, local businesses um, and without their generosity really the hospice wouldn't be what it is today. I was a doctor's secretary for 32 years and I'd retired and then we were told this dreadful news that my husband had an inoperable brain tumour and they gave him three months to live. So we were married 44 years and I thought, well, I'm going to look after him all the time. But luckily, our doctor had introduced us to Anne Crosby, one of the palliative care nurses here who visited me. And she watched the progress as it went along. And it was getting very difficult to look after Sam because he is, by that time he had gone into a wee world of his own and didn't know what he was doing or saying and didn't mean what he was doing or saying. And she convinced me that it would be good to bring him in here. But I'd always been frightened, always been terrified of the hospice. The finality of it, you know. However, we brought him in. And that day, I went to the front desk and the young lady said, who are you bringing in? And I said, Sam Perry. And before I knew it, there was two nurses, one at either side of me. We're going to look after Sam, where is he? I said, he's coming in in a wheelchair. And one of them ran out and she said, hello, Sam. She said, what's your name? And he said, Sam Perry. 
P-E-R-R-Y. And she said, well, my name's Wendy, W-E-N-D-Y, and we're going to get on just fine. And she did. She cared. They all did. I cannot say that one nurse stood out more than the other. And I mean, I know there's 30 patients, and probably when Sam was on, there was 30 patients. But it didn't look that way to me. It looked as if Sam was the only patient. He had care 24 hours, seven. They couldn't do enough for him. So then, unfortunately, Sam passed away very peacefully, and we were lucky. We were there to hold him in our arms till he did go. And then the next fortnight later, my doorbell goes, and there's Anne Crosby standing. Is there anything I can do for you? And if you knew just how much I needed that at that particular time, I thought I'll never, ever be able to repay the hospice for what they did for not just Sam, but for me and my family. And I had said I would like to volunteer. They let me come after six months, and I have never regretted it. And every time I come through that door, I think, good, this is payback time. I'm paying something back to them that I could never, ever repay them for what they did for me and mine. The day Grandad died was very, very sad. We all cried and hugged each other. Then I said that Grandad wouldn't like us to be unhappy. He never seemed to be unhappy in the hostess. He was just happy and smiley all the time. And anyway, we've still got Jesse to remind us of him. Proud to see him. In a dream that I've seen. In the day that has gone. On the flow of the wind and the ocean. And the black of the night. And the fake of the to the